Okay, so we had a garden tour here this morning and the light is good and everything looks pretty good. It's all wet, but it's all good. So I figured it was a nice time to take a walk around the garden. So this is the bed that we put in to carry all the rainwater that runs down the driveway. And the dark purple are a kind of Louisiana iris. We have daylilies here that will be blooming soon. And in here we have some uh, Japanese iris and hybrids. In the back, that red and yellow plant is called Spigelia marylandica. I don't think it has a common name, so we just call it Spigelia. And there's lots of cardinal flowers that are growing in here now. They just keep seeding themselves and filling in. That's fine with us. So in this section, we have some tree peonies that finished blooming a little while ago. And some other wildflower stuff back in the back. And in front, this plant is, uh, covers itself in white blooms and has these bright gold flowers. It's called uh, Slender Dutzia um, Chardonnay Pearls. And then next to it in a similar color is this spreading plant that's called Golden Geisha. We have a dark-leaved hydrangea that should be blooming soon. And it's underneath all these uh, different viburnums that we have planted through here, some of which were native to the area and some of which we, we transplanted in here. All right, we'll take the path through the woods first. So the first little set of hostas and a Japanese maple there. And then this is the last of these rock wall beds that I built. Um, this one's a little taller and I actually cemented the top stones in place to make it a little more stable. And we have some big hostas here. This one you've probably never seen before. It's called Milkmaid, and you can see how it just looks like it's all speckled with milk. It's nice. And the pretty one in the back is Orion's Belt, and this one is called Cutting Edge. So walking through the path with the native viburnums through here. This is the next bed with mostly hostas in it. The nice striped one in the middle is called Risky Business. This is an azalea that comes from, I think, Alabama. Um, has really pretty, you can't tell now, but it has really pretty and fragrant white blooms on it. More hostas in this bed. Too many hostas. And a nice upright yew plant to kind of make an evergreen accent. But we made this open up a little bit so you can see through to the front of the house. And then just this year I planted that uh, big curly hosta in the back of this bed to, so you can see it from both sides. Right. Come back around to this side. We have a, a set of pots that live in this corner of the woods with this nice uh, dark colored Japanese red maple. People came through on the garden tour and said, oh, you have St. Saint, Saint Francis looking over everybody. And I had to say, no, that's St. Fiacra because he's carrying a shovel, a patron saint of gardeners. off into the woods here. Most of those ferns are native, and then I've put some ostrich ferns way in the back there, if you can see them. Um, also native, but they had not been in that part of the garden before. And this one is a kind of royal fern, and a uh, sweet spire, <coughs> IT of Virginica, uh, Henry's Garnet, I think this is, or Little Henry. So it's, uh, it smells really good, and usually is covered with bees. I don't see them today. But uh, we had a lot of flies earlier, they're not bothering me right now, so that's good. So here's the view through to the front of the house from a little further distance.
and I'm walking along the path. It's a nice place to sit. I won't sit for, for this uh, video tour, but it's a good place to sit and see everything. You kind of get an idea of the view when I bring the camera around this way. As you can see, all the way to the backyard. Finally starting to see some sun today, which is nice after a few days of rain. So here's the bed from the front of the house. The Japanese maple went in 22 years ago, maybe 23 years ago, I guess, just after we moved in. And most of these hostas came with us from our house in Wilmington, especially this big sagae, which is now easily seven feet across. And that's the view all down to the front walk. There is a clematis growing up along the side of the house now. It doesn't bloom very well, but we're hoping it'll get better in time. Hardest part of the lawn to mow because it's such a bad shape. <laughs> All right. More hostas here on this edge of the woods. I'll focus on this gold one here, which is one of my own hybrids. There actually wasn't any hybridizing involved. I just grew seeds that somebody else had grown and thought that this was a nice one. It's called birthday candles. There used to be a big hydrangea uh, um, tomentosa in this bed, um, or viburnum tomentosa, and it died. So we put hostas here and they've been happy ever since. So this is Liberty, which is related to Sagae. And this gold one is another one of my hybrids. Again, just uh, one that I collected seeds from and planted, and it's turned out really well. So I think I'll probably name this one Pirouette. You can see up close that the, each of the tips of the leaves have a nice little twist to them. And this one is really sort of a star, always gets everyone's attention. It's called Goodness Gracious. And we have a hydrangea in the back starting to bloom and an oak leaf hydrangea further back in there. A few more hostas. We used to have a whole bunch of these quince bushes, but they were just taking up too much space. So we've left two for now to kind of soften the the um, sewage crock that's there. There's a pump station under there. This one is one of our stranger hostas because it doesn't make a whole lot of leaves, but it makes really big ones. That's called Night Shift. And I'll come across here to get a picture of, this is a, an Asian magnolia. It's just finishing blooming. And I'll focus in on this one bloom. You don't get to smell it from this, but it's really pretty on the inside, too. So then this is the last of these beds of hostas. Really big one here on the right is called Elatior. And the one in the center there, the gold one, is called Guilt by Association. And I'll come around this way. start walking to the bed across the driveway. So we put this magnolia in last year and it finally bloomed this year and have some uh, grasses here that mark the end of this bed. But then there's still space for more hostas out here. They're getting a little too much sun, but um, we think the trees will grow in in time and do better. So this is I'll get close enough so you can see why it's called this, a lace bark pine. And you can see how the, the bark flakes off and leaves nice colors behind. So it's starting to get big enough to show that. The neighbor thinks there's something wrong with it because it's not very dense, but it shows what he knows. <laughs> it's just showing off. 
So I finally found a place in the back there where hoikaras seem to do well up against the base of a tree where they stay nice and dry. So it's kind of good to have a little punch of color back in there. So we call this area the Pinetum because it has lots of uh, conifer trees on it and shrubs. So a few of that. This is a Japanese maple that we had growing in a pot that got big enough now that it fits in the garden. So it has very delicate leaves, very sort of lacy, pointy leaves. So more hostas through here. And I'll go up so that you can see the leaves on this variegated red bud. It's called Alley Cat. I think it's very pretty. So we brought these penstem and put them in this bed to have something that wasn't a hosta here. They're a little too big right now, but it's, they are pretty when they're in bloom. So this is a, a beard's tongue penstemon. Next to this hosta that's called Forbidden Fruit. Very nice, that one. And I'll get down lower on this next one to see why it's unusual. It's called Peacock Strut. And if you can tell, the stems underneath are a really deep purple. So underneath this big pine tree here is a section where I'm growing a whole bunch of my seedlings that are all sort of squiggly in shape. Um, almost all of these are my seedlings. The one right here in the center with the white edge is not mine, but the rest of them are all seedlings that I've grown. So this one may be the future star of the group. Nice blue color and squiggly, squiggly leaves. Here we have some more of the, Japan, uh, the um, Japanese iris and Louisiana iris, because this place is really swampy. You know, we've had rain the last few days and the water still hasn't soaked in yet. And there used to be a tree in this area that died. So we uh, started planting things here and then two years ago, completely, you know, filled it in with dirt and um, planted everything up. No, this was just actually last, early last spring that we planted all of this. So this has all just been here a year, although most of the plants that are here came from other parts of the garden or had been, you know, sort of holding, waiting for a time that we could get there. So the big one in the center will need a new home before too long. It's a gold-edged version of the hosta called Empress Wu and uh, in time it will be seven feet across as well. So we'll have to put that somewhere else where it can, can show off. So I'll come around here to the, the view to the backyard. We just filled this area in with gravel last year because it was too, um, too wet to have the mowers come in and out. That's good. And we have this little display area here on the end of the driveway. So I built the built a sort of stairs unit out of decking material and uh, Stephen gets to have fun arranging where all the pots go every year. So we're sort of training that little evergreen in a, a bonsai sort of style but not keeping it dwarfed very much. It's a dwarf form to begin with. So having fun with that. And um, it's a shame but the rose arbor was completely covered in blooms the other day, and with all the rain, there's not much left. It'll have another flush of blooms, I think. There's lots of buds up there, but they just kind of got pounded. And then we have this bed at the end of the driveway. Some of these hostas have gotten too big, but I'm leaving them for now. And on this, uh, this tree here, which had died two, a few years back, We've got Clematis starting to train up that as well. Okay. Come back towards this way for a longer view of that new bed. 
along the driveway. And then here under this um, peacock maple, I've built a little terrace with rocks to hold all the pots for all the miniature hostas that wouldn't be able to grow underneath this uh, river birch tree. Cruise along the cruise along the walk here. We always consider it a miracle when this fountain starts running again every year when we turn it back on. <laughs> this host has become one of my favorites. It's called Fantabulous. It's really quite quite striking. I posted this on Facebook and people are like, where can I buy that? And it's apparently not very easy to find. So this is a big one that looks like the classic Francis Williams hosta, but it actually um, um, grows a little better. This is Fran C, which is a, another classic hosta. And back here we have two that are favorites around the world. Halcyon is the blue one on the right. And its sport or mutation there on the left is June. This is the big Sagae that we've had for 28 years now. And the blue and gold border here is just about to start blooming, but not yet. Same with the the red is still being here, starting to show what color they are, but not blooming yet. Several of the visitors today like this sculpture that was made by uh, an a, a acquaintance of ours, not a close friend, but somebody we know. Uh, so he has a face on one side, and a face on the other side. So there's more of that Spigelia marilandica, the red and yellow flowers. This is the maple tree that we put in when we moved in. Um, maybe actually brought that in a pot from our house in Wilmington, I don't remember now. And some of Stilby's growing through here. And then you can see the view through to the backyard with the smoke bush now in bloom, the big red smoke bush. So over on this side, uh, this section has lots of hellebores, so very pretty in early spring. And the big hosta in the middle is called Funky Monkey, because it has some funky leaf colorations. It's just starting to show. See how they're a little bit mottled looking? Some people think it's a disease, but it's actually just the way this hosta looks. And this one in front is called Imperial Palace. It's also done very well. The blue one here comes from a hybridizer in the south who can grow blue ones that actually hold their color really well. It's called Tar Heel Blue because he lives in North Carolina. And we have this native azalea that was just in full bloom today for all the visitors. And again, it smells really good This is a variegated Kusa dogwood, and now you can see the, the rock wall and the sort of gutter that we built to carry water away through here. It's turned out very well so far. So we rearranged this bed and moved the bird bath to the other side, and it's all done very well from that replanting. This is sort of a fun plant that's common name is shredded umbrella plant. So a very pop, um, very good name for it. It comes up with these little fuzzy things that poke up out of the ground and then they open up and turn into these umbrellas. And it's here with this Japanese forest grass that starts right here where Troublesome Creek starts. So I'll walk along Troublesome Creek, which is all planted with 
um, almost all Native American plants that grow in wetlands. So we have the giant Joe pie weed, we have the um, hibiscus, native hibiscus. This is actually not the native, but it's a turtle head that grows in there. And the purple in here is that same Louisiana iris that we had out front. And this is a shorter version of Joe pie weed. They call it Little Joe, but in fact, it's still almost four feet tall. Coming down the path this way is a sylphium known as cup plant. And this one has made an actual really good demonstration of why it's called cup plant, how it holds water there. And there's uh, queen of the prairie in here and bee balm and some um, goldenrod that we can never quite get rid of, but it's okay, it all mixes together. Sorry, very up close and personal with the sylphium there. And here is a, a scarlet hibiscus. This one will get seven or eight feet tall. Tall enough that we can see it out the bathroom window. There's a different kind of philopendula that's blooming already. It's white, whereas the queen of the prairie stuff is pink. And then up in here we have some uh, winterberry hollies that are blooming. And this is the, the bog. That the plant blooming now is called bachelor's buttons. But you can also see there are some pitcher plants growing in here and some cardinal flower. And through this section, again, more native plants. So that's Amsonia hubrichtii and some clumps of iris and a different philopendula, um, a tall ironweed. And then through here, I've got a whole set of cardinal flower seedlings that have just kind of popped up here and there, different colors different color foliage. So this section was mostly um, Iris virginica, the native sweet flag iris, but on the far side of it there was some more of the Louisiana iris back in there and a different uh, Joe pie weed. And then this comes to the pond at the end of Troublesome Creek where the water runs off into the woods from here. So there are frogs and at, le at least one fish in there that uh, we didn't think was there but it showed up this spring after having been missing for months and months. All right, so we'll walk back the path this way. That's a big um, zebra grass. Um, they're supposed to be invasive, but this one was known for not ever producing any seeds, and we've never seen a seedling from it. So even though it's not native, we keep it because it's sort of a big placeholder <laughs> in the garden. It takes up a lot of space and makes a sort of accent point. So I'm going to come back now to the bed with the smoke bush on it. I'll come a little bit to the right so you can see. This is a vigala, and it has these bright gold leaves, and when it blooms, they are... Oh, there's one bloom left in here. I'll come and, come and find it. They are a scary, scary pink color. So it's a very bold colored plant. This is Hosta plantaginia that we have from the hook house and a big patch of the striped lily of the valley. And here's a view across the backyard from this angle. So over here are the tomatoes and the blueberries and uh, lettuce and herbs and things mostly in here. Tomatoes are already big this year. I've got a, there's one cherry tomato in there ready to eat. And the blueberries will be ready this week, start to be ready this week. And that's a clematis vine that has sweet fragrant flowers, very nice. The view along the meadow, there's still some spider wart, the Tradescantia blooming. And the penstemon is blooming out in there too. Don't see as much right there. We'll see some in other ways. And then under here, actually planted some hostas and some other things in this space here.
Now this is a cat mint blooming on this bed and a variegated sanguisorba. It's a kind of burnet um, and put in some gold colored grasses and blue foliaged uh, dianthus carnations there. They smell good. Um, this is a plant that blooms blue late, late in the summer, but has a nice little creamy white edge on it. it has that sort of blue leaf too. So this bed has hot colored flowers and cool colored foliage and some uh, cool colored flowers as well. So there's pale purples of the cat mint and of this clematis. And we replaced this yucca this year and it's rewarding us with a nice spike. And then next to this is an acanthus or um, bear's britches. Um, this one is called white lip or white lips. The daylilies will start to bloom soon, as long as we keep the deer away. And we think there's a bird's nest in this guy right now <laughs> to take care of that. There's another clump of spigelia. The yarrow is starting to bloom. We have some of that native in the meadow, but um, here we planted one that has a name. Um, and this is a sort of a bushy clematis. It needs some help to hold it erect, but it's called Stand By Me. On the end here is a gold version of the smoke bush and some of the gold flowered um, butterfly weed, Asclepius tuberosa, next to it. And the ground cover in here is a form of Lysimachia with that dark foliage and little yellow flowers. So again, colors here are hot and cold, kind of nothing in between in this bed. And we'll come along to the end of the daylily bed, which will be very colorful a few <clears throat> in a few weeks, but right now it's just a big green, big green mass. Back here we have some of the um, winterter um, viburnum nudum. Uh, they, they do not smell good. They are actually rather stinky. Coming through this path here. This huge plant is a native of the American prairie. <coughs> it has flower stalks that grow <coughs> seven or eight feet tall. <coughs> and this is a gold leaf form of a uh, coreopsis, <coughs> a tall flower, a tall leaf coreopsis. <coughs> Excuse me. And one of our favorite hostas here is called Jujin. It's a, a sport or a mutation of one called squash casserole. So our new favorite tree is just here. I'll give you a close-up of the tips of the leaves, and then I'll give you a sort of a dizzying view up into it. It's called flamethrower because of the way the new leaves come out, that dark red. And if we look up into the crown of the tree, you can get a sense why that's really a good name for it. And it blooms just like any other red bud, covered itself in little pink flowers. <clears throat> I'll turn to this bed a little bit. This is sort of another kind of land is swampy here, see what will grow, and it's uh, turning out pretty nicely. So we have a, a Japanese plant that's called mountain mint, and we have some spider wart in here, and some dwarf astilbes, and the Japanese forest grass that does so well here with a native Carex grass, Carex pennsylvanica growing in between, and huge ostrich ferns in the back there with this button bush being the, the bigger structure here. Then coming back to where the hostas are here, big mass of hostas through here of different kinds. Too many to name. There's over 55 different hostas on this one garden bed. So 10% 10, 10 of the hostas we have are out here. A few more hostas on this side. They have to fight with the tree roots back in this section, but doing all right. <clears throat> it's a different kind of, of the um, Dutzia with the uh, white flowers or slightly pink flowers. <clears throat> and 
And then we have this lovely bench from our friends Barbara and Tiff Tiffany here underneath this tree. I'll turn so you can see what the view is from here. Hold on, don't get dizzy. So that's the other long view across the backyard. All right, I'll come back this way so we can see the other side of this sea of hostas bed. That's some and substance, the big one on the end. <clears throat> this one's called satisfaction. We love this uh, toffee twist grass. It just looks like it's dead, <clears throat> but then it grows every spring. And if you look down in here, that you could see that this one is actually blooming. So kind of a, an interesting thing to add to a garden. We put in another Japanese maple here last year. It's called Moonfire. So it turns a nice color in the fall, as well as being nice and dark this time of year. <clears throat> This is one of my seedlings that I'm evaluating, hoping that it will have this sort of green gold color with a creamy edge to match the coloration of another hosta that we have. <clears throat> it's a nice view from this side of the bed. Clematis vine is taking over the pole that, that uh, Papa's dinner bell is on. <clears throat> and around here are plants that I'm using in hybridizing. Um, sitting on the ground, there are seedlings from this year, <clears throat> some of which are doing really quite well. And then continuing on the path this way. There's another hosta that's becoming a favorite. It's called Rare Breed, because it's actually very rare that white-centered plants grow well, and this one is doing quite well. Here's a fairly new hosta that's called Tom Terrific, and he is sort of terrific in a pot. I'll come down a little bit so you can see. He also has the very, very dark legs. So from a distance, it just looks like these leaves are floating in space. Here's a section we'll be working on now that we've got the path through here all sort of taken care of. Uh, it's one of the few places that we see a, a chance for expanding. All right, coming around to where the end of the driveway is. <clears throat> some of the plants that we have sort of in a nursery pen here to help them grow better. Uh, some of them are my seedlings more other plants here. Some of these will need homes in the garden pretty quickly because they're getting too big. I'm walking past these. Here in the end is a rare time when you have hostas that are um, related to each other by mutation but they have the opposite colorations and they both grow well. So one of these is called Parky's Prize and the other is called Sweet Home Chicago. Um, and they grow really just about the same, which is nice to have. I'll come up through here so you see through to the, looking through the rose arbor the other direction. And we'll come to the plants that are here on in pots on the patio. Little things we have here, evergreens and a um, flowering maple, a butylon, that has gold speckled leaves. There's the pool for the fish.
more evergreens in pots over here. A little trough where a pask flower is taking over. And here's the view to the backyard from here. I'll walk along here. Wouldn't mind sitting down on that sofa right now. And the last set of plants here is just what we have in our planters this, this year. Color theme was blue, pale blue, uh, pink, and white. And I always have to have some, some plants in here with dark leaf foliage. So, Thanks for the tour.